I'm going to talk briefly about cleaning the homes for Pesach. Um, just a little introduction, um, which is that usually when you think of cleaning for Pesach, I don't know if you saw the cartoon that I shared, when you think of cleaning for Pesach, so it's associated with enormous burden, right? People think of it as, oh, such a lot of work, it's so hard. And the truth is, it does involve work, but the Mishnah says that actually the reason for that, the reason why many people feel that way, is because there are many, many stringencies and customs that people have taken on over the years and over the generations, for good reason, but they've been added, essentially, above and beyond the letter of the law. And so that sometimes that has, you know, <clears throat> that has caused people to, to actually confuse what's halakha and what's a stringency and what's a custom, and a person just learns at least the, the basic halakha, so then a person's going to be able, with that knowledge, to go ahead and be able to approach this mitzvah, clean for Pesach, in the same, with the right frame of mind, as Mishpura says, in the sense of simcha, just like you would do any other mitzvah. Okay, so the first thing, um, I guess, before we go into any practical things, just first thing to know, why is it that we're even cleaning for Pesach? Or where does that come from? Why are we cleaning for Pesach? Okay, so there's two main reasons, okay? Um, first of all, is chametz cannot be seen or found, right? That's the possible lo yireb, lo yimatzei, ba yireb, ba you can't have, you can't, there's an issa in the Torah to have chametz over Pesach, that's one. And a separate reason, which is connected, but it's a separate reason, is there's a positive miss of tashbisu, of destroying your chametz, which you can already fulfill now, by the way, already within 30 days of Pesach, as soon as it's Purim, within that 30 day time frame, you have a positive miss to go ahead and destroy your chametz. Okay, so those are the two driving reasons why we, we are, we're starting to clean already for Pesach. Now, practically, mid according to the Torah, all you need to do you need to do one of two things. Either physically destroy the comments you have, or mentally designate it as, war, as, as void and worthless and ownerless to you. Okay, that's the bittle. Midorai, according to Torah, either one is sufficient, because either one halakhically destroys the comments, either because it's physically no longer present, or because it's disassociated from you and it's viewed, it's viewed to you as nothing, and therefore it's completely... Um, just so to assume it's no longer your comment. Now, that is, that, oh, welcome. That is Midrash Torah. Midrash Banan, the Rachachamim hold Midrash Banan, they have to go ahead and do both. Why is it that, and that's what we do today, we do both the destroying comments and we do a bit of comments. Why is that? If I'm doing a bit of comments, I've already halakhali got rid of my comments. Why do I need to actually destroy the comments? And if I destroy the comments, what's the point of doing the bit It seems to be unnecessary. The Chachamim said, they should go ahead and do both. Why is it? It's a discussion on the show, but it comes out three reasons. Number one, it's we're concerned that your bittel that you do might be insincere. Yeah, I know, I just received, as you know if you're in my shit, a geschmack bottle of kava. Okay, kava is this beautiful, uh, beautiful, highly recommended, kava shabbos kodesh, highly recommended um, bottle of caramel vodka. Okay, it's comment. Now, if I go ahead and and say, okay, yeah, I'm just being mavatale, okay? I'm nullifying you. Yeah, yeah, Hashem, this is not mine. I, I see this as, the, you know, like in English, I see this as dust of the earth. I don't really like Harbo, Hashem. Come on, I don't really like this. It's really dust of the earth to me. It's not mine. Now, I like Harbo. It's Kishmak, only Shabbat to me. So now, the Chachamim would be legitimately concerned that I won't feel disassociated enough from my carbo through my attempted bittle. And therefore they said that it's not enough. Even though Midor writes it, yes, it's true, if you'd actually do a sincere bittle, it would be enough. You have things that, that are hard for you to part from, and therefore an insincere bittle, and uh, since an insincere bittle wouldn't, wouldn't work, and we're concerned you'd have an insincere bittle in some instances, they will come instead, it's not enough, you have to go ahead and do your destruction as well. We're going to talk about, certainly if we have time, Mr. Shem as well. Now, in addition, um, even if you do a sincere bittle, let's say, um, you know, I don't really like Oreos so much, especially the, the, the you know, Oreo thins. Okay, maybe if it's double stuff, still stuff, we spoke about that in share. Okay, you're smart, don't you know? Fine, but the Oreo thins, ah, I don't really like it so much. So, you know, I could do a real bittle on that. Bittle comments, yeah, this is like dust of the earth, these Oreos, no problem. But the Chaim was still concerned that if I just do that, that, I, that they're concerned for two things. First of all, I might have missed some. There might be comments I don't know about, and, I didn't, and, and, and that bit didn't really cover that. Um, 
And therefore, if you own by your body Matia, what I would have found that I do have, I see from it, so I do own over Pesach. And secondly, they're concerned that you might come to eat it by mistake. If you have comets around in your house, even if, even if you move out of there and you have a sincere bitter, you might just, just absentmindedly go ahead and, and eat some comets if it's there, if it's there. And therefore, the comet says, through a bittle and a beer. Through your bittle, modify it mentally, but also go ahead and destroy it. In that way, there's no concern of, uh, therefore, therefore, even if you did not say bittle, you physically think destroyed it. And even if you physically destroyed it, uh, even if you may have missed some, you, um, nonetheless, you may battle even that which you missed. Okay, those, so that's the background to why there's a heap now to go ahead and clean. How far do you have to go? Yeah, go on. Um, is it a- that's one might forget that it's Pesach or that he like bittled this stuff that it's Chavitz. Wait, well, you're saying the re- it was, we were concerned that you might just forget, which is what's the reason why you're for, we're concerned you might come to eat it. You might come to eat it because you're just hungry and you forget either you forget it's Pesach or you forgot that, that you don't realize this is, you think everything here is kosher to Mum said that she cleaned the whole house. Oh yes, it's all kosher to Like someone posted the other day about Pesach rolls. Oh yeah, yeah, everything, it's a Pesach roll. Like it's all made of potato flour. No, no, it's a real roll, right? So that's why I don't really recommend getting Pesach rolls. Like, uh, uh, unless you really know it's Pesach rolls. Okay, maybe. Okay, anyway, so now, <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so now, how far do you have to go? Okay, we're going to... How far do you have to go? So, this is also... Now, you'll see a lot of people go to the very end of the green, they'll move everything, they'll move... Even people who may not be as committed in other areas of Allah, you'll find when it comes to Pesach, they'll move everything, like the fridge and the freezer and the upside down, like justifying. Is that required or not? The truth is... The truth is, that far is generally not required, because... Let's say you have a little piece of dirty, I'll give an example. A dirty crumb of chametz, okay, under the fridge, okay? If it's dirty crumb, it's inedible, you're not going to come to eat it. It's not even around, you can't see it. There's no kashash that you're going to go and, and put that in your mouth by mistake. So that, uh, technically speaking, there wouldn't actually be a requirement on that crumb. So what is required, what's not required, I'll be halakha. So, it depends. If the chametz is, is dirty, as you say in American, dirty, so if it's dirty, yeah, so <laughs> only a piece, dirty. Dirty. so only a piece no, that's dirty. actually, again, so only a piece that's a kazayas, okay? Only a piece that's a kazayas um, is prohibited no. to own less than a kazayas, pieces yeah. that are less than a kazayas of, of inedible chametz. That's what, by dirty, luckily dirty is, is, means inedible. It's, it's not edible, it's not food, okay? If it's less than a kazayas, then there's no concern. If it's edible, okay, then even a, even a small piece has to be removed. If it's edible, you, can, you can't even eat a crumb on Pesach. You can't even have a crumb, you can't, you're not allowed to eat a crumb. Okay, yeah. What if it's not kosher? If it's not kosher, but comics, so it's the same rule. So if it's edible, if it's edible, then even a smaller piece. If it's not edible, then a kazayas. What does that mean by not edible? Not edible means you wouldn't, uh, means you wouldn't eat it. And kosher is not spiritually spirit edible. It's true, but you might eat it. Not you, but maybe someone in the mishpah. Yeah. Okay, so now, therefore, what do you have to remove? La halacha. La halacha, you have to remove two things. Okay, well. Small pieces of edible chametz. Okay, that's the pashas, that's midaraisa. Okay. Small pieces of edible chametz and large pieces of inedible chametz. Okay. Lachachala, you do not, la halacha, have to remove every last crumb. But the minute is to be meticulous if one is able to. I'm going to skip now in honor of Albert Schlitter, who's going to answer all your questions. I'm going to skip 90% of, of the rest I was going to talk about, the different things, but I'm happy to talk afterwards. And really, I, I submit Mabata Mardas from Albert Schlitter, the positive wage power. I just want to finish up with one, one uh, line to, 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 to drive it home, which is above and beyond the halakha. So when you're cleaning for chametz, when you're cleaning your house for Pesach, so it's, also, it's worth thinking about what, what, what does it represent? The ch- we know the chametz, right? It's, 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 it's risen, it's dough that's risen, right? It's parallel to, the, to the, the, inf- the inflated sense of self that a person can have. And when we're, getting dis- when we're destroying the chametz, we're trying to find that chametz and trying to get rid of it. So ultimately, we should be trying to think about the fact that we're looking in preparation for Pesach 
preparation of the tithe, we're going to go out of the Mem Tesari Tum from the 49 levels of Tum. We're going to leave that. We're going to leave that place of Mitzrayim where we made Sarah, where we where we're caught in this narrow strait. We're going to leave that prison of Mitzrayim and we're going to go towards Asina. We want to matire ourselves. We want to we want to do Teshuvah. We want to get rid of that sense of gaiva, that arrogance, that inflated sense of self, which is not real. Mats is the real thing. The chala and the, the, the but that's 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 not the re- that's not a real reflection of the flower and water, right? There's a, there's that's it's risen. Okay, that 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 act of rising, which represents the gaiva, isn't a real person. My gaiva state isn't the real me. That's the that's the me that I'm trying to, to perhaps share with others, and it's the inflated sense of self. But ultimately, when it comes coming into pace up, we want to leave that mate, we want to leave that prison of Mitzrayim. It's a reminder to try and Mitzrayim to get rid of that gaiva and come into pace up in a state of cleanliness with good middas and with a with a, with um, our with our desire, Mitzrayim, to serve Hashem. And ultimately, when we're doing this, and we're getting rid of the comics, it's an opportunity to think about it. It's one of the only things you do with your whole body. You're searching around, knees, you're squatting, your arms, your legs, everything. You're using your whole grip as an opportunity to actually, you're sanctifying your whole body when you're cleaning for comics. It's an amazing thing. Um, and beyond the technical, beyond the technical mitzvahs that we spoke about that you're fulfilling through tashpitsu, through actually positively fulfilling the mitzvah, destroy comics, and Prevent itself from being over on the, the negative mitzvah by everybody who might say there's also other mitzvahs involved that you can have in mind. There's giving over aim, but your parents are happy that you're cleaning your house of Pesach. There's chesed that you're doing to your mishpacha, and the other people are going to be in your house, so you're giving them a, a chomet free home. And many other mitzvahs that you can have in mind as well as part of your, part of your um, cleaning for Pesach.